killed my favorite plant. <laughs> um, I have had this variegated watermelon peperomia for a couple of years and I love variegated watermelon peperomia. Number one, I love watermelon peperomia. I think they look like watermelon. I just think they're like the cutest freaking plant ever. And then I got sent a variegated version of it and it was thriving. Um, and then it got hit with spider mites and then I think it suffered for some root with some root rot. And this is the remnants. Um, I'll YouTube it out and show you there are like absolutely no roots left. So today I am going to um, try and resuscitate this plant. So my really good plant friend, Leslie Halleck, who has been on the podcast a lot, she wrote Plant Parenting and it's all about propagating plants. So I kind of texted her uh, freaking out and she told me that the best way to probably resuscitate this plant is take all fresh cuttings, um, root them in water, and then pot up the plant and just start from scratch, like just start over. So that's what we're gonna do, and I think it's gonna be a fun learning experience. In her book, she actually has a page where she shows three different types of peperomia propagation. So I think I'm gonna do three different types as well. Um, and we'll see, kind of make it an experiment and see like what roots the fastest. And it'll be fun to repot the plant and see maybe if we get some variegation growing back eventually. Uh, we'll see. So I'm gonna do a stem tip cutting, a petiole cutting, and a leaf cutting. So before we get started, a few things that I'm gonna be using. Number one, Leslie's book. I'm literally like opening, <laughs> open to the pages and following her instructions. She shows you how to propagate like any type of plant in any form of way. It's really amazing. It's broken down really amazingly. So her book, Plant Parenting, Easy Ways to Make More Houseplants, Vegetables, and Flowers. So that's gonna guide us along. I have sterile snippers. These are modern sprout. Um, they're a sponsor of the podcast. I love them. They have this great little latch. And then I just think they're a sexy, real sexy little snipper. And then uh, I have a mason jar with water to put the cuttings in. And then RT1 Home makes these little propagation cones. So that's gonna help the plants not fall into the water. So I spoke with Leslie and we're gonna do stem cuttings. And she said that you should have two to three nodes, um, only two to three nodes on each cutting. So that basically means, means that I'm gonna be cutting off most of the bottom of the plant, which isn't really viable anyway. Um, so this one, fell off so we're just going to cut that leaf off and there we go off we go so we've got that one in there we've got that one in there um then we've got this one so i'm seeing the nodes this just fell off oopsie daisy this plant i'm kind of embarrassed but you know what i've been gone for a year and shit happens part of my language <laughs> so this will be a great experiment um so once again with the stem cuttings, she says, and you can read this all in her book, the stem cuttings are on page 144. Um, so the cutting should be three to three and a half inches and you should leave two to three nodes. Whoopsies. So we're gonna do that. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way and then count one, two, three. Uh, and when you take these cuttings, you want to cut right under the node. So the node is like the knuckle. Um, that's where the root will grow and you want to cut right under it. So that guy's going in the water. And then while we're doing this, we're also taking petiole cuttings, which are the petiole is basically like the stem that connects the leaf to the actual like stem of the plant. So by doing that, all you simply do is you just leave like two to, th I think she says leave two to three inches no, leave one inch of the petiole attached to the leaf and cut it at a 45 degree angle. So we're gonna do that. Stick that sucker in the water. That's at least a really nice leaf. Then we're gonna do another stem cutting over here. This is the dead and decaying root system. Sorry! So sorry! Each of her stem cuttings has two peperomia leaves attached and then a node that's cut 
Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do there. And then I guess we should pick a couple of leaves for leaf cutting, so let's do these. And with leaf cuttings, you literally just take the leaf and you cut it in half, and then you stick the leaf in soil, and roots will grow, apparently. I've actually never done it, so I'm gonna try that separately. Um, and I'm gonna, oh, I didn't get soil, so I will do that offline. I will prepare the leaf cuttings um, in the soil, not while we're recording. All right, so I'm gonna stick those suckers in soil. I've gotta fill that up with water, but we've got all those cuttings. Um, and we'll see what happens. Thank you so much, Leslie. The remnants. Sorry, guys. Sorry, friends. My bad. So this is what it looks like and some roots are growing, so stay tuned. Okay, we are a week and a half into the propagation experiment and we've got roots, plant friends. So it looks like the stem cuttings are rooting faster than the petiole cuttings, but we've got some juicy little roots growing. So this is the um, RT1 propagation cone. So I'm gonna leave that in water for probably at least a cup another week and I'll check back in with you then. All right, plant friends, today is the day. We've got so many roots. They are established, they have branched out. And my thought is we'll be potting it up in this pot. So I'm gonna take these roots out so we can take a closer inspection on what cuttings uh, rooted the fastest. We're on day 36. So these are the petiole cuttings and these are the tip stem cuttings, the tip cuttings. So as you can see, the petiole cuttings rooted there's some good roots here but because you're just working with a smaller amount of space to root i think there's less um but still like great to pot up you can see there's some branching going on leslie says in her book that um they should be an inch to two inches or and um have branched these are like bad boys i mean look at that because there were more nodes for roots to sprout tons of branching you can see these even sprouted little plantlets um so i'm really happy i did both oh and then this was an epic fail i think what happened was the soil was too moist to start so most of the um most of them rotted and then i let the soil dry out and then the last ones just totally dried out so epic fail maria but I'm really happy I tried each three ways because I would definitely say if you're looking for like the quickest, dirtiest, most successful, it would be this way. And then, but the petioles work great too. So I'm going to collect all of these puppies and pop them into this pot, which I got in um, California a while ago. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little Michael Jackson moment because I got boo-boo today. Um, so I'm gonna just, but I wanna feel the soil in my other hands because I've been cooped up from quarantine and I need some soil under my fingernails. So I'm gonna have one, one glove today. Um, so we're gonna do high quality organic potting mix. That's what I have been doing. I love Espoma Organic. Um, there we go. So fun fact about this pot, which is so cool. I love it. Um, well, one fun fact is I broke this and you can see Billy super glued it together for me. So wabi sabi. Um, I went to San Diego with Billy for his birthday and we met up with, um, work hard, plant hard, Christine, and she took me plant shopping and I bought this. So I think of her every time I use it. So I am going to make a nice little mixture of these cuttings and just kind of put the petioles and the um, tip cuttings all together. And then I'm going to use a Spoma organic normal potting mix. Um, it's what I use like almost on all my plants. They also make a cactus mix, but it's organic. Um, it's really high quality and I freaking love it! So, let's see. 
And that's pretty simple, guys. As you can see, it's a really well-draining potting mix. There's a ton of pumice in it. Pumice is puffed lava rock, but you want peperomia. Um, most houseplants you want with a well-draining potting mix because um, you don't want the roots to be sitting in water, which is what happened with my old watermelon peperomia. So I'm going to learn and gonna learn from my mistakes. stand these guys up you want to make sure that there's oopsies you want to make sure that there's like a base of soil before you pot these plants up so that you're not just like sticking the roots on the bottom of the pot and now I'm just gonna slowly start patting the soil down and adding more I'm so excited I'm so thankful to Leslie and her book and her coaching for helping me save this guy because this was my ultimate prized possession. So because these have been propagating in water, I spoke with Leslie about this too, I'm gonna keep this potting soil, this medium, a little more moist than I would normally. Um, when you're transitioning plants that have been water propagating into soil, it's important that that soil medium that you, the growing medium that you transplant, that you just leave it a little more moist than normal for the transition period. So you don't want to leave your plant in moist soil on a day by day basis. But as it's transitioning, think about it. Those roots have only been in 100% water like for their entire life. So putting them in a, meat, in a growing medium that has air, it has pumice, it has um, organic medium, it's going to be a shock. So also you should anticipate that your plants will kind of go through a little bit of shock. Um, so if you keep the medium more moist, it's just going to help them kind of go through that transition. I'm going to also stick it under my grow light, which is like a nice, it's kind of like the equivalent of like soft indirect light to make sure that they just can get all the light that they need to photosynthesize and become happier. I'm gonna take this over to my sink, if you can see. After you pot up a plant, you always want to let water run through. Um, I water the plant until water is gonna start dripping through this Hole. As you can see, it's starting. Can you see it's starting to drip? Drip, drip, drip. Um, so you want to make sure that the you water the plant and that water is going to settle through the soil. It's going to help settle the soil, make it nice and comfy around those roots, and then drip through the bottom. So in general watering practices, that's how I water all my plants. But make sure when you're potting plants up that you pat, 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 water, 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 drip, 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 and then you're good to go. So here's my new watermelon peperomia. I'm very excited to see it bounce back and continue blooming and growing. Thank you to Leslie Halleck. Check out her book, Plant Parenting. Um, other things that we went through, the RT1 home propagation little cone was really helpful. I rooted everything just in my little jar and a spoma organic soil, which I love. Um, so check everything out if you're interested in maybe making plant babies of your own and you can save the plants that you almost kill as well, my plant friends. I hope you're enjoying quarantine. Keep blooming and keep growing.